I'm gonna be sharing the story about how I got Cinnabon and how the breeder I got her from was not a good breeder. Hello buns and welcome back to Cinnabon Sundays, a weekly video series where we talk about all things bunny. I'm Morgan, Cinnabon's Bun Mom, and today's video is a little bit different than what we typically post on this channel. It's very rare that I just sit down and do like a story time, but there's a question that you guys ask me a lot on my DMs and just in comments, and I feel like this is a good time for me to just really open up, share my full story, be a little vulnerable with you, and hopefully my story helps someone out there looking for a bunny going through an experience similar to me. I'm gonna be sharing the story about how I got Cinnabon and how the breeder I got her from was not a good breeder and the issues that I had leading up, the weird feelings I had, and even issues that I had once I brought her home. So in the story time today, I'm not gonna be saying the name of the breeder. I'm not making this to like attack this breeder, to attack this person, but instead I'm making this video more as an informational video about the dangers of breeding and just things that you can come across. So it's not necessarily as much a story about how this breeder is terrible, but more about how breeding as a whole can be really bad if not done properly and just a lot of the issues within the system itself. So I have loved rabbits my entire life. Bunnies have always been one of my favorite animals. I grew up on a farm so I had horses, bunnies, cats, dogs, all of the things, but I never had just like a dedicated rabbit that was a free roam bunny that was mine, that was mine to care for. But I've always been really in love with the idea of having one. I got Cinnabon in June of 2020. Now before then, I had been looking to get a rabbit for a while. At the time I was living in a group house in Washington DC, me and five other roommates, which that's too many roommates, I'll just let you know. But it was really fun, however, I wasn't allowed to have pets there. So I knew that the second I left that house, I was gonna get a pet and that pet was gonna be a rabbit. I did a decent amount of research beforehand. I mean, I literally pretty much just researched rabbit ownership for like two years because at that point I was just obsessing over the idea of getting one. But because I couldn't get one with my housing, I had nothing to do but research it, which was good for me because I learned all about free roaming, all about food, everything that I needed to know leading up to getting Cinnabon. But within that research, most of it was coming from rabbit breeders out there, and I just assumed that that was the way that you get a bunny. I didn't know of any rabbit rescues near me. I didn't really know that was a thing, so I was definitely going down the breeder route. So for the longest time, there was a breeder in a different state that I was like, this is what I want. She has the bunnies I want. This is everything. And I could tell they were a good breeder from their website. They posted a lot of pictures. They actually were really big advocates of free roaming. So to me, in my brain back then, I was like, this is perfect. Again, not really knowing that adoption was an option. Also that shipping a rabbit across state lines is a really big stressor for them. But that was just something I didn't know at the time. So I thought I was doing everything right. I was super obsessed with the idea that I was gonna do it. I knew I was moving in with Bryant into an apartment in the summer where I could have a pet. So I was like, this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get her from this place. But then March 2020 happened, aka the pandemic, which just changed everything for everyone. It no longer was an option for me to pursue this breeder from a different state, but that led me to be a little bit more impulsive with my search because at this point I had been wanting a bunny for so long that I wasn't about to just completely like abandon my search and start over. I was like, I'm still gonna get a bunny in June, it's happening. I'm gonna find one. So I started just like Googling bunny breeders near me. And there were two separate ones I was looking at. Now, before I go on, I do wanna say I don't bash all rabbit breeders. While I think that adoption is the best thing to do because so many rabbits are abandoned, there are breeders out there that are actually doing a lot of good for the rabbit community, educating owners about free roaming, about proper diet, and really helping raise a whole new generation of bunnies going into homes that are actually gonna tend to them the way that they should be cared for. I narrowed it down to two breeders, one that was closer and had rabbits that were like $350, which is just ridiculous. But I will say, they were really intent on making sure that whoever picked up a bunny from them understood everything about rabbits. They had like a 10 page document. They had things you had to sign to say that you were gonna free roam your rabbit and feed them a certain way. And that if you couldn't do that, you could return your rabbit to them and they would care for their rabbits. So clearly they cared about their rabbits. That was one option. The other option is where I actually got Cinnabon from. It was a little farther away and it was kind of just a free for all of, we have bunnies, they're cute, and you can put your name on a wait list. And when bunnies are available, 
available, we'll reach out to you. So I kind of started pursuing both options. The one that was closer to me that was more expensive, there was like basically a bidding war, which also now that I think of the idea of a bidding war over an animal, it makes me just really uncomfortable. There's just so many other rabbits that need homes. Like why are we bidding over one when there's just so many other ones, but didn't get the bunny in that situation. So I really started pursuing this other breeder down in Richmond, Virginia. And I was so excited at this point because it was really starting to seem like I was going to get this bunny. Communication was like pretty brief. There wasn't really a lot going on. It was pretty much just like you pay a $10 deposit to put your name on a wait list and then she'll email you pictures of bunnies when they're available. And so eventually I got the photo of Cinnabon, which I'll pop up on the screen. And it was so, per I was just like, this is her. This is Cinnabon the rabbit. I know it. I was in love. I knew she was the one. So I claimed her. That was it. I told her when I wanted to pick her up, if that was like right timing wise. And the woman assured me, yep, it is. And so I waited until June 22nd when I went to get her. So I went and picked up Cinnabon. And first of all, we pull up and there was like a big Trump sign in the front yard, which automatically I was like, uh, and a Confederate flag hanging. And again, I was like, uh, but it's fine. I pull up and she literally just walks out of the house holding the smallest little perfect munchkin, AKA Cinnabon, and essentially just like gave her to me through the window. Like it was a very quick transaction. She gave me a bag of her food and she was like, I emailed you some instructions for rabbit care, bye. And that was literally it. Of course we were in a pandemic, so it wasn't a situation where we wanted to be talking a lot, but it was very much just like, here's your money, bye. Like no checking in on me, no really giving me any instructions, just like take it, you know? While I was there, I was just looking around at where I was getting Cinnabon from and there were pigs walking around in the yard. I could see hutches in the back. I didn't realize going in that the bunnies were living in hutches and not even inside. So they were outdoor rabbits. All of them were in closed wire caged hutches. There were chickens, just like, it, it just kind of felt very chaotic and not a situation you wouldn't want your rabbit to just be immersed in. I mean, at this point, I'm literally holding her in my hand and I'm like, okay, bye. So we leave. I get home with Cinnabon and she is so small and so perfect. And so I start reading the email that she sent me that had all of the like rabbit care instructions on it. And that's when I really started being like, okay, these red flags I was feeling in the beginning, they are now actually real red flags. And what did I do? I found out that Cinnabon was not eight weeks old. Cinnabon was six weeks old. A rabbit should not be separated from their mother before eight weeks of age. They're still drinking the mother's milk, they're still growing to a point where they can't be separated from their parent. The fact that this woman told me the rabbit would be ready and would be the right age at the time I needed her was a lie. That's not true. Cinnabon was born on May 10th, which I found out through this email. That made her six weeks old which is so young. The care sheet was like a page long and there was nothing really in there about free roaming, nothing in there about like proper types of things to have. It was talking about water bottles that you hang in cages. But the big thing for me though on this care sheet was baby rabbits need to eat Timothy hay for the first six months of their life. And then when they're adults, you switch them over to alfalfa. Any rabbit owner knows that that is the opposite of what's true. Baby rabbits eat alfalfa until they're six months of age because it has so much calcium, it's very fattening, it's not as nutritious for them, but it helps them grow. And once they become adult rabbits after six months of age, that's when you switch them over to Timothy hay orchard grass, the grass haze. In my brain, I'm thinking, okay, this is probably a typo because that's a really big mistake. However, even if it's a typo, that is the information sheet that you are sending home to new rabbit owners. You cannot have a typo that big in the sheet that you are providing for the new owner. For all the new owner knows, that's right and that's what they do, which can be so bad for your rabbit. That's terrible. So just all of that, I was like, dang, I don't really think I like where my money went for this, but I have this bunny and I'm going to love the heck out of her. I tried sending pictures to the breeder to let her know like she was doing great. And she, I mean, she would respond and be like, yay, cool. But it was very clear that like, she did not care where her rabbits went when they came home. There was no like, send me pictures, keep me updated. It was like, oh, thanks for the pick, bye, that kind of thing. But at this point, I'm like, you know what? I have Cinnabon, she's going to have an amazing life. It doesn't really matter where she came from. What matters is where we go from here, which is very true. But even from there, problems were arising. After about two weeks of having Cinnabon, I noticed she was itching like crazy. So I took her to the vet. 
and it turns out that she had fermites, which fermites are like little parasites that get into your rabbit's fur. They look almost like dandruff and it's very itchy. Treatment is pretty easy. You just put like a topical cream on it every like two weeks or something. They cleared up really quickly, but it was like, well, of course she had mites. She was living outside in a hutch with a ton of other rabbits. So right away, that was a vet bill. That was something I had to pay attention to and something that she was dealing with as a really young baby. That wasn't it. There's more. So then a few months later, I noticed that Cinnabon was really itchy down around her bottom and she was starting to lose fur in patches and baby bunnies don't really molt and shed that much. So I was like, something is wrong. Something is not right. And one day she hopped out of her litter box and a poop fell out with her. And I saw a little clear thing sticking out of it. That clear thing was a pinworm. So Cinnabon had worms. Again, lucky for me, worm treatment is really easy. You just take your rabbit to the vet. They'll give you some medicine that you syringe feed them for like 10 days. For Cinnabon, it cleared up right away. But again, it was another health issue that came with living outside in poor conditions. Honestly, her mother probably had worms because she was living outside and gave it to all of her babies. So Cinnabon came home with mites, she came home with pinworms, and she came home far too young with bad information. Not to like toot my own horn, but lucky for Cinnabon, I'm a really attentive bunny mom, so I was able to notice all of these things really early and get them cleared up so that she was a healthy little lady. A lot of times if a bunny is coming from a place with a lot of bunnies, mites and pinworms are things that can be transferred from rabbit to rabbit, but it's way more likely to get those things if your rabbit is living in poor conditions, which she was for the first six weeks of her life. What's my reason for sharing this story? Well, first of all, it's transparency. I talk so much about doing your research, finding a great place to get your bunny from, caring for your rabbit, but I am here telling you that while I still did so much research leading up to getting Cinnabon, I still made mistakes and I still made a huge mistake by getting Cinnabon from a place where I probably should not have supported. It doesn't really matter as much where she came from, it much more matters where I take her and how I raise her, but there are just so many other rabbits out there that really need a home and need that opportunity that we don't need to be feeding into industries like this bunny breeding industry. There are rabbit breeders out there that are doing so much good for the community, but that percentage is so small because it's covered by all of these like backyard breeders like where I got Cinnabon from that it's really 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 hard to separate the good from the bad. So I'm sitting here sharing the story being super vulnerable and admitting my mistakes to you because I don't want you to make the same mistake I did and if you have made the same mistake I did I don't want you to feel guilty about it because I live in guilt about it. I think about it all the time but what matters the most is that you are giving your rabbit the best life possible. I hope my story resonated with some of you and I hope that y'all still understand that I'm learning, I'm human, I'm doing the best that I can and while I can share my experience to help other bun moms grow, there are things that I need to learn as well and things that I have learned since getting Cinnabon. That is our story. I hope that you enjoyed listening to it. If you're looking to get a rabbit and have no idea where to start, I'm actually gonna link in my description my how to get a rabbit video, which I talk all about breeders versus adoption and kind of the difference in where you should look and how you should go about doing that. But this is more, I wanted to be more open and less educational in this video. This was really just a sharing time. But if you're trying to learn more about it, click that video. I think that it will be really useful to you and hopefully you don't make the same mistake I did. It was really nice talking to y'all and I hope that you enjoyed this type of format as well and I'll see you in our next video. Bye buns.